Well, I just want to welcome you. I'm so glad that you were able to join our Wednesday youth live stream. We're going to sing a couple songs, so just sing this out with me. Sometimes on this journey, get lost in my mistakes. It looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. My story isn't over, my story's just begun. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, here in the father's house. And check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. You're in the Father's house. Yeah. Let's sing this out. Arrival's not the end game. The journey's where you are. You never want it perfect. You just want it not hard. And my story isn't over. This story isn't great. The day is never final, and the father's in the room. The day is never final, the father's in the room. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, here in the father's house, check your shame at the door. Cause it ain't welcome anymore. Prodigals. Prodigals come home to help us find home. And love is on the move when the father's in the room. The prison doors swing wide, the dead come to life. And love is on the move when the father's in the room. Miracles take place, the cynical find faith. And love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Jericho walls are quaking, the stronghold's now are shaking. And love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. And love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Ooh, lay your burdens down.
Son for redemption, the price for my heart. And I don't have the context for that kind of love. I don't understand, I, I can't comprehend. All I know is I need you. I run to the Father. for this time of worship you've given us. I pray over this message, God, that we can just really take something from it today. Pray for our weeks and I pray for our health and safety, God, that you are just over us all right now. I pray this in your name. Amen. Hi there, you little chicken nuggets. It's me, presidential candidate Carl here. In today's world, people are using language about as colorful as Joseph's robe. <laughs> Technicolor. <laughs> but as Christians, we're held to a higher standard. We're told to watch what we say. After all, our tongue is an udder, rudder. But what happens when we step on a Lego, stub our toe, or when my cousin Mikhail calls you? and complains that you left the front door open while she was on vacation, and that time a pack of raccoons infested her house, and she blames you for it, then what are you gonna say? Profanity? <laughs> no. So may I present to you, church hacks, Christian cussing, and expressions. Song of Solomon on Sunday. Son of a number seven. Simon, son of Jonah. Holy Advocare, Crowder Chowder. Golly, one day on a bagel. Oh, Mother Pharaoh. No oh, potluck. Profanity. Cuss. 
Mother of manna. Locust and honey on a hilltop. I cannot believe that. Fireproof. For the love of Kanye's salvation. Noah's kneecaps. Frank's channel on the fishing line. That's terrible. Dare you to move. Son of a Bathsheba. Bull chip and Joanna. Shut the lion's mouth and call me Daniel. Thieves and peppermint. Heaven's the Bethel. <laughs> ah. Rolling Rahab. Water into wine on Easter Sunday. Hillsong on a stick. Holy Shadrach. Judas, kiss that hurt. I tell you what, she's saltier than Lot's wife. And that's salty. Paul on a wall, what is this guy doing? I tell you what, that guy's name must be Peter because he's in denial. Father, forgive them because they do not know how to use a flanker. For the love of homeschoolers, it's green. And all the people said, <laughs> get off the road. I will drop you like Jericho's wall if you do that one more time. Waymaker, more like better make a way before I run you over. Holy Advocare. They call an ambulance because this video is going to be sick. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm praying forever who's hurt. Should we fall in? Hi, guys, and welcome to Vineyard Youth online. My name is Michaela and I'm super excited to be sharing with you guys today. But before we jump in, I want to tell you guys a little story. So I remember my first roller coaster. It was in Disneyland, truly the happiest place on earth. I was only six years old. I was in first grade. And at the time, this ride was called California Screamin'. I was there with my mom, my dad, my two sisters, and my grandma. All six of us got fast passes for this ride, but when it came down to it, my sisters were too scared to go on it. My mom, dad, and I jumped in line. Who was I kidding? I wasn't gonna wimp out like my sisters. You all know the feeling though, standing in line, inching my way closer to the ride, getting strapped in, and the fear that it isn't actually locked. Yes, I was scared, but I played it cool and the ride took off. Dude, let me tell you, it was the best thing ever. Remember, we had six fast passes, so three were left. Of course, we jumped back in line and rode it again. My sisters totally missed out. I love roller coasters. From that moment forward, love them. Share in the chat if you guys like roller coasters and what's your favorite roller coaster? You know, life right now kind of reminds me a little bit like a roller coaster. And I know it's cheesy and it's a cliche, you hear it all the time, but you gotta admit, the year 2020 is one heck of a roller coaster. It's all been uncomfortable. It's been different and totally unexpected and a bit scary. It's become normal to hear that people are living in fear. And I can see why. We're stuck in our homes, people are wearing masks, so much has changed. You gotta admit, it's a little scary at times. When we find ourselves in situations where things are out of our control, whether it's a roller coaster, COVID-19, injustice, fighting our parents, a breakup or rumors, we have to choose. Do we want to live cheerfully or fearfully? And I know it's hard to hear and may sound like a silly question, but really, do you want to live cheerfully or fearfully? In a world where we have so little control, it can be easy to live fearfully when really you want to live cheerfully. But God makes it possible to live cheerfully in the midst of chaos. God tells us that he is there and he is in control. God encourages us not to worry. He says in Matthew 6 verses 25 through 27, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. It's not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds in the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet their heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour in your life? God says, even the birds, the pigeons that poop all over your car and your patio, God provides for them and he cares for them. 
And for a bird with very little, they strictly rely on God to be fed daily. Talk about fear. And they're out there singing songs and waking us up in the morning. God explains to us that we might do the same. We must trust in him. And as Matthew writes, do not worry. But how? Great question. We have to go to God. We have to talk and walk away from fear and choose to live cheerfully. To live cheerfully, we have to do one important thing. Now, I don't want you guys to miss this, so please listen carefully. Stop posting just for one second in the chat. To live cheerfully, we have to pray. We have to spend time with God, talk with God. In our prayer, we have to bring our fears, bring our worries to Him in order to live cheerfully. God says in 1 Peter 5, 7, we must cast all our anxieties onto Him. And again in Philippians 4, verse 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. We have to bring those worries to Him and trust that He's in control and He's going to provide for us. We have to give Him thanks. Thank God for what you do have and what is to come. You know, in life, it's so easy to live fearfully that we forget the things that we should be thankful for. Now, I want you all to type in the chat one thing that you are thankful for. Even in the midst of fear, in the midst of this COVID-19, there is so much to still be thankful for. First Colossians 5, 18 tells us, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. God has promised eternal life in the midst of fear, there is so much still to come and he is still providing for you now, just like he did the birds. Will you live in fear or will you seek truth? Will you seek God who is in control, even in the midst of this chaos? Live cheerfully, right? If you're giving thanks to God and you live with gratitude, you will live cheerfully. A roller coaster, yes, has its ups and downs. It has its drops and it can be scary. It turns and you don't know what to expect. That's life and God's gonna be there in it with you. So enjoy it and give thanks to him for the things that we have because there is so much yet to come. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much just for bringing all of us here to gather together, even when we're apart, Lord, in our homes, online, Lord. We just thank you for this opportunity, God. And even in the midst of these scary times where it's so easy for us to live fearfully in our everyday life, Lord, I pray that we choose to live cheerfully, choose to seek you and to thank you in the midst of our chaos, Lord. We trust that you're in control and we trust that you're gonna provide us just like he provides for the birds, Lord. We thank you for everything that you are. And it's in your name we pray, amen. Thank you guys so much for joining us and I can't wait to see you next week.